So hi everyone, I'm really, really excited today to be chatting to Rosalind Butler. Rosalind is a playwright and has written this spectacular play, which I think every school child who's in high school should be watching. It's called Expelled. Rosalind, thank you so much for being here today. Please, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes, well, I studied drama um, after school at UCT, um, which was very based on theater and acting. Um, and I worked as an actress for a while, and then I kind of moved into writing and mainly television writing, which I've done ever since. Um, and I've worked on quite a lot of daily dramas, like Isi Dingo, I was on for many, many years, and um, ETV Scandal, and lots of different kind of um, dramas like Home Affairs and Lioness, various, you know, so I've had a lot of television experience, um, but theatre is and always will be my first love. And um, um, quite a few years ago, I had a play um, on a kind of comedy called An Unromantic Comedy that did well in Johannesburg and various parts of the country and um, kind of been very busy with television ever since, but now I'm very happy that uh, Expelled, which I've worked on for quite a few years and, you know, you know, it deals with content that's very close to my heart. I've got three children ranging in age from 18 to 24. So um, social media, uh, yes, is, is a big part of all of our worlds and something that interests me in many ways because it has a power to connect, but it also has a power to destroy. Why did you put it within a family context and a school context? Um, well, I think because I wanted to deal with kind of social media addiction, which is kind of the mom's character is is kind of obsessed with Facebook and what okay. people are doing on it. And, and it drives her mad, but she doesn't seem to be able to stop. Why did you why did you choose a social media topic? Um, I think because it's something that is so much part of our lives that we all engage with. You know, a very few people I know are entirely off social media. Um, it's something that we, and especially for younger people, I think they've grown up with a lot of kind of um, their lives playing out there um, and their social interactions as well. Um, it's kind of totally normal to, you know, you don't often hear a phone call these days with younger people. It's all text and um, how you present yourself to the world is important. Um, and so I just wanted to do something that explored different aspects of it um, within a family. And because, you know, you don't want it to be a lecture or, you know, it's not, it's certainly not, the play is not prescriptive and a story um, is the best way to kind of communicate that. that that's very true. You, you spoke about the mother and um, her being addicted to social media. And there's an interesting thing with the Pew research, which looks at teenagers and in the research they did, I think it was in 2018, they interviewed both parents and children. And the stats were actually really close in terms of parents saying their children were on social media too much, but the children saying their parents were on social media too much. How I think they, they, one was 47% and one was 52%. So really close together in terms of how they perceived each other and the use of social media. So I think what you're saying just makes so much sense in terms of how in society we're totally absorbed by it. And also um, different platforms, though. You know, I think kind of yes. older generations kind of tend to like Facebook, whereas, um, you know, I know, you know, my younger children kind of Instagram is a, is a big thing. Yeah. And, um, and I think also parents also don't know, even if they follow their children on Instagram, there's always a Finster account, <laughs> which is where things really happen. So, um, but I was also interested in the negative sides of it and, and kind of how we expose ourselves so much um, on these platforms without really always understanding exactly you know what happens and how you know what is the truth because truth has become very blurred because people kind of curate their feeds they put out what they want to be there or sometimes the other extreme they overshare and reveal too much things that could also you know impact on them negatively so i wanted to kind of play with the, the, you know what is true and what is not true is perception 
reality now because everything is housed perceived through a lens, you know, and through that social media lens, or is um, is yeah, and, and and that thing of what is seen cannot be unseen, yeah. you know, um, and, and and once something's been streamed or something's been shared something that you might not want shared, the ramifications, and then that's the central kind of story yeah. of Expelled, the ramifications for the child, for the parents, for it's massive. And your life, you know, and lives are destroyed. I mean, you know, if you think of online bullying, we don't deal with that much yeah. at all. Um, but online bullying and and uh, can really, you know, um, you read all the time about children where they're tragic you know, tragic ends to these yeah. stories because there's a deep sense of shame. There's a there's a feeling that your life will never be the same again. So all those things really, really interested me. And then also that idea of how something, you know, a moment can be filmed and it wasn't really thought through. It wasn't really seen. It was a bit of a laugh. But if it's streamed and it kind of is seen as, um, you know, uh, just it can be damaging for the school, say, or, yeah. you know, then it doesn't matter what you truly believe or whatever, that is the person that the world sees. And um, and often I think those conversations, it can be difficult conversations, particularly if something's not politically correct or, um, you know, in this case it's kind of um, of a, a kind of male toxicity through through that, um, that, that's how it perceived. And it is indeed part of that, but it's a much bigger picture. But, you know, the, the boys are immediately cast out from the school and there's no, and that's what the mother struggles with is why can they not use this to educate them? But yeah. unfortunately in this kind of instant, um, you know, literally in seconds, your life is changed. And so you have to be, you know, if you're being filmed, um, Emma Sadlia, you know, has done a lot of talks yes, on this. Yes, um, uh, and don't film yourself doing anything that you wouldn't want on a billboard. Um, and I think yeah. that's, you know, the, the play explores all of those those things. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's almost not on a billboard. It's I, I always talk about it. If you had to sit with your photos and your grandmother or your gogo was sitting next to you, are you happy to go through all your photos with her? You know, like, are you proud of all the photos on your photo roll? You know, it's something before you yes. even start sending it out, think. Yes, you know? yes. Create but, you know, something awareness. people can film you, and I think it's also interesting the way, yes. you yes. know, um, people are filming all the time, so nothing is private, and that's another central theme of the play, is nothing is private anymore because people are filming, people are sharing, and people also have power, you know, the yes. kind of, um, and, and to go back to online bullying, you know, someone in a second can post something about you that's not true, but, you know, they can really, really, there's suddenly this power for everyone to be able to destroy your life if they, you know, or try to, if, if they wished. Yeah. yeah, and I suppose when you start thinking about it, it becomes really scary in terms of we really need to be conscious about what we're putting out there um, and how we're behaving in every single instance. As you're saying, it might not be you creating, it might be somebody else, you know. So yes. that's very important. And in, in terms of the kind of, you know, online grooming that happens, you know, you can't believe, you know, unless it's someone you know, you know, you can't believe that anyone is any, you know, you, you can't trust anything, you know, anyone who pops up in your messenger, you know, your messages or your inbox. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's just there's so many layers of deception and destruction that can happen that one cannot be careful enough. And I mean, you talk about the online grooming, they talk about some of the online grooming, the person will groom the young person for years, they talk about from five to 15 years before they physically try and make contact with them. I mean, God, by then crazy. you think you know the person. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, it as really you say, is. yeah, very, you very know, so you've got to kind of yeah, be very careful who you let in to your circle because you could, yeah, you know, or who you connect with. I mean, you've almost got to, you know, just be incredibly suspicious on all on all levels. Yeah, and to teach younger children to do that is also difficult, you know. So, so yes. for me, things like parents buying online games for children that have got a much higher age limit to what their own child is, and they're saying, yeah, but everybody's doing it. It's just 
so scary. Mm. Um, mm. No, so absolutely. What, what you're highlighting is just so very important. Uh, no, and yet that it is also a way people connect. And certainly during lockdown, it was incredible. You know, kids could talk, they could still game, they could, you know, that generation could still communicate in a way that previous generations wouldn't have been able to. So it's not all negative. It's yeah. just, you know, be responsible and be aware. Yeah. You know, this is yeah. a world. It's a whole world. And like the world, you know, there's good and bad and there are ways of making yourself safe and ways of opening yourself up to danger. Exactly. I mean, it's for me, it's like we when I first started teaching, you would you would do a whole lesson on a stranger danger. I mean, it was part of the grade two curriculum. And for me, going on to the internet is the same thing. You've got to teach the same kind of rules. You going into a world, what what are the safety things that you need to consider there? There's always good and bad. And so yes, just being absolutely. aware is is so important. So in terms of the technology, um, how did you portray that in in the play? I mean, it's it's a social media, so it's tech. How did you how did you portray yes. that as part of the play? Well, when I wrote it, I really wanted technology to be integrated into the theatricality oh. of the play. But I wasn't, you know, it's obviously using tech, using projectors, having things filmed, it's all expensive. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't sure, you know, how far we'd be able to go. Um, but luckily, um, Hannah Branca, the producers and um, the director and the designers really all work together. And so it's actually integrated. Um, there are conversations that are filmed. So um, Alex, the lead, is talking to his girlfriend and she's on a screen, but the screen is huge. So, um, you know, it's kind of how she dominates him and his life in, in terms of. And, um, you know, there's a Zoom call. We see texts on screen. We see, you know, kind of Instagram pics. So it really has been integrated um, quite seamlessly and and really feels very contemporary and um, and it looks fantastic. So I've actually been blown away by how they've done it. Oh, that's lovely. I mean, and as the writer, that must make you even um, more excited that they were able to depict what was in your head, that they could put it on the, yeah. on the Even if they've done it way better than I could have imagined. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Um, who do you think should attend the play? Um, I think definitely, I think it appeals to a kind of parents and, and, and teens, because um, I've had really great responses. Um, you know, the, 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 some of the parents have felt very connected to, to, to what they've seen. And, and quite a few people have said, I think because it's South African, you know, it feels like our lives. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's also, it's, it's also, although it is a drama, um, there are lots of dark comedy moments and funny lines. So it's definitely entertaining. It's, it's not, um, and it's also left open-ended. What I really wanted to do with the play was, you know, let's open a conversation about um, some of these issues. You know, it's not, you know, definitely it's dangerous, lives are ruined, et cetera, but it's kind of, the ending is quite ambiguous with how bad was the video um, that was streamed? Should they have, should it have been those consequences? Um, but they definitely are consequences. And um, and then the, uh, Alex takes it a little bit further. So, yeah, I think it's, I think anyone, one of my um, colleagues uh, wrote a little blurb and said anyone with a phone should come and see it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think that that's true, like anyone with a phone. And I think if the children are too young, the parents should come and watch and then have the conversations with their children. Um, yes. Because I, I think that's, that's what we almost need is we want to have the conversations with our children. Because otherwise, how do you really find out, as you say, all the perhaps pseudonyms that children have created on social media that you can't see and things like that? If you're not having the conversations, when something happens, how do the children know they can come and speak to you? So for me, yes. what you're saying, leaving it open-ended and starting the conversation is just the kind of thing that we need in society. Like talk to your children, have the discussions, have the difficult chat. You know, but also, I mean, and it's not saying don't use social media. You know, my no. one friend halfway through her son, who's um, 15, 
whispered to her while watching play and said, do not make me go off Instagram. Um, and it's definitely not, it's definitely not saying that. It's just saying, use it, but be responsible and know yeah. that it can go horribly wrong. You know, yeah, you yeah. just be very, just be careful. And, and I think that's the other side of us as parents. So years ago, I'll tell you how many years ago, when um, my children were little they, and they started getting phones and started um, using chats and things, I would actually learn the platform and get to understand it so that I would be able to have a conversation around what it was about um, um, and, and to navigate that as well. And I think often parents go, oh, no, I can't do this technology thing, you know. And I think that's also not true. We don't have to be saying that. We can be trying to learn it along the way, that you can have the discussions and you understand what the children are speaking about or what's happening on those platforms. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's about discussion. Yeah. Yeah, it is about discussion. So in terms of schools, um, have you got school bookings or is it just individuals? How does that work? And if it's for schools, how do they attend? Well, there are definitely school bookings and they're also at the at the uh, Baxter. Every Tuesday at 11, there's a special show that um, is at a time that if, you know, during school hours, if schools want to come, they could come to that. And um, the, the market theatre in Johannesburg also has um, special times for school um school performances so um yes i think they it's uh, the bookings are through web tickets there's um web tickets um for the baxter production which runs to the end of february and for the market theater runs to the end of march um and so there are um and if there's any issue with booking for schools um there definitely is a very good school discount as well in terms of the ticket price but if there's any difficulty for booking for schools um on on web tickets then you could uh, contact the theaters individually um but yes i mean we really really um encourage um, schools to come. And I think um, so far from what I've seen, it really has um, resonance and um, a, a really great response and, and making you know, adults and, and, and younger people think a little bit more, hopefully. So, so as we end off, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and for sharing. What nugget would you give to young people in terms of perhaps somebody who's watching who wants to become a playwright or to study drama or something along those lines? What would your suggestion or your... Um, Look, it really comment? helps if you do drama from a trick. Um, I think it, that really helps because obviously if you go, if you want to act and you go to drama schools, m many drama schools, you need to audition, not all. There's some very good ones that you don't need to. Um, but I would say if you want to write and direct, um, there are university courses and there are also uh, places like AFTA, um, AFTA Cape Town, which I know, um, you know, has kind of really kind of very practical courses in terms of making your own films. But the universities also have um, great courses. But I would say it's not essential. Um, both the young leads in our show are not studying drama. Um, but... I mean, they're just a year out of school. They might change their minds. But um, I think, yes, definitely, if you want to write, then studying drama or acting or film, anything um, along those lines really, you know, um, will help you. But um, there are many, many courses that are. But I think the most important thing is it's not an easy um, career. Uh, you know, you have to hustle. Yeah. You're kind of going from job to job. You know, very few people get a job unless you teach or, you know, you yeah, kind of yeah. um, stay permanently in a soap or something like that. But I think I think you just need a, a passion and you need to want to share stories. Ah, oh, thank you. So thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I really hope that the play is a huge success. I think it's really something that as society we need. So thank you for writing it. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you for giving me time to share some thoughts. Uh, thank you.